You're probably wondering, what show is this? There's not brown cupboards, there's not a wooden table. New kitchen, new recipes, new month, April's coming at you right now. So for the past month and a half, my family's been surviving on microwave and fast food. So it is time to make some real gosh darn food. And when you wanna make the most of it, you have to go the distance with your recipes. So we're gonna do that with our basil cornbread salad. So we're gonna start by making some fresh cornbread that we're eventually gonna turn into croutons. So in order to do that, I'm gonna start with one cup of flour and I'm gonna put that in my mixing bowl. To my one cup of flour, I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of corn meal. I almost said cornbread, not that far yet. Corn meal. And then I have a quarter cup of sugar. And then in order to get our bread to rise, we're gonna to have to add some baking powder. And we have two tablespoons of baking powder. And then our very last thing that we're gonna add is one teaspoon of salt. So before I add any of my wet ingredients, what I wanna do is just take, I've got a rubber scraper here. I'm just gonna fold and combine. This is gonna make sure I don't get any pockets of cornmeal in there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our wet ingredients. And we're going to do that by getting one and one quarter cup of milk. And to that, I'm gonna add two eggs. You could, if you wanted to, make this in a separate bowl, but my measuring cup will do just fine holding two of my eggs. So I'm going to add that to my measuring cup and just save on doing a little bit of dishes at the end. So then I'm gonna take just a whisk. I'm gonna start by breaking my yolks inside of that measuring cup. And then I'm just gonna stir to combine these all together. We know that it's nice and combined when we go from that white milk color to a nice yellow color. So now I'm going to make a well, and if you're not a person that makes a lot of bread, I'm just gonna make a tiny little divot in the middle of my ingredients. So now I'm gonna pour my liquid right into the middle of that well. And I'm going to take that same spatula again, or rubber scraper, and just fold it all together to combine it. Now I said this was a basil cornbread salad, so I'm gonna move my cornbread batter off to the side for right now, and now I'm going to work on my basil. So I have some fresh basil here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my leaves off of my stem, and I want the nicer sized leaves. You do have some smaller ones in there, I just don't think the flavor is as nice in this cornbread. So I'm gonna take my larger leaves, and when I have it all chopped up, what I wanna do is I wanna have about a half a cup, so it's gonna take a fair amount of leaves. Now, if you have not chopped fresh basil before, you're gonna to wanna to stack up your leaves, like so. And I like to get the stems all on the same end. And then all I need to do, now that they're nice and stacked, is roll these up, because that's gonna make it a lot easier. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get almost like a ribbon with our basil. And this is going to be a flavoring agent for our cornbread. Now, you might have dried basil in your kitchen cupboard, but when you use that dry basil, the flavor gets so intense because it's been dehydrated and it's taken all of that liquid out of it. And so that means that we're gonna wanna stick with fresh basil. Fresh basil is easy to find in Hastings. It's at all of our grocery stores, so you don't have to worry too much about trying to hunt this down. So now that I have my basil cut, I've got about a handful, and with my measurements, about a handful equates to about a half a cup. I'm just gonna sprinkle that on the top of my cornbread batter, and now I'm just gonna fold my basil into my cornbread batter. And what I've done is I've already gotten a pan ready. I have a nine by nine cake pan, and I have a piece of parchment paper. I've got some extra up on the edges to kind of make little handles for myself. And I have this sprayed with cooking spray. Now all I need to do is take my bowl and pour in my cornbread batter. And now, this is all I need to do to get my cornbread ready for the oven. I have my oven preheated at 350 degrees, and I'm gonna put this in for about 35 minutes. Your oven could be a little more or a little less, give or take. So we'll bake this up, and then we'll get ready for round two to turn it into some croutons. Our bread is out of the oven, and we actually have let it totally cool, because now we're going to start slicing it. So like I said, we lined with parchment paper, so we can get rid of that, and we had our little handles to take it out easier. So we're gonna start by slicing it the long way, and I want these 
to be about a half inch long, uh, half inch long, that doesn't make any sense, about a half inch wide with my slices. Now with this, the nice thing is you have a choice as to how large you want your croutons to actually be. I like it where you don't have to like through your croutons, but you know, if you like those big croutons, that's totally a style choice for yourself. So I'm gonna be making smaller croutons today, so I'm slicing it the long way. So now I have myself all sliced and all diced. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to lay these on their side, just like this, but because it's an end piece, I've already got a flat side over there, so I'm gonna take advantage of that. And what I'm gonna do is gently hold the sides, and I'm gonna cut it crossways and now I'm simply going to come through and make small little cubes out of my bread. Now normally I wouldn't have this small of a cutting board but with the beautification of television we want it to look as nice as possible but obviously you don't have to work on such a compacted space. Once I have all of my bread cubes cut from a row I'm just transferring it over to a baking sheet that I have lined with parchment paper. I don't have to oil my baking sheet at all. If you wanted to add a secondary flavor to your croutons, you could brush them or drop them into a bowl with olive oil, let them roll around in there, and then put that second flavoring on there. But I'm sticking with just basil because it makes sense with my meal as a whole. If I look at my sheet pan now, it's nice and full. I don't want to overcrowd my sheet pan. I still have plenty of bread to keep slicing, but I can get my first pan of croutons started in my oven. So I have my oven at 400 degrees. I'm gonna put it in for 10 to 15 minutes. Now that seems like a wide swing of time. That 10 minutes would be if you have really small croutons all the way up to 15 minutes on that larger size of crouton. After that first 10 to 15 minutes, I'm gonna flip them all over using a spatula, another 10 to 15 minutes, and we'll be back in just a moment to see what they look like. After all that time in our oven and drying out our cornbread, we now have these delicious croutons to put on our salad. So in order to make a delicious salad, we need a delicious salad dressing. So we are going to start by just using the container that my stick blender came with. You could do this in a bowl if you want to, but we're gonna wanna mix everything together. So I'm gonna start with one cup of mayonnaise. Mmm mayonnaise. This is kind of a little spin on a Caesar dressing, but you wouldn't want a really garlicky Caesar dressing with this because of the cornbread and basil. It gives it kind of, I don't know, Italian meets Southwestern United States. I don't know. But with this, we have that one cup of mayonnaise. To it, I am then going to add two teaspoons of anchovy paste. So with this, if you've never purchased anchovy paste before, you can find it in the same part of the grocery store where you'd maybe find your canned tunas. And then I have three teaspoons of grated Parmesan cheese, and I'm gonna start by pureeing these all together before we add the last couple of ingredients. Unsuccessful. <laughs> there we go, let's lock it into place. All right, now to this, we are going to add three other liquid ingredients. So we have one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. We have one teaspoon of lemon juice. It can be from a bottle or fresh squeezed. And we have one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And this Dijon flavoring with the Dijon mustard is gonna be a nice companion to that flavor that we have in our pasta dish. We're gonna mix it up a little more before we add our final ingredient. The last thing that we're gonna do just for a little bit of kick is we have a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Now we are going to dress our salad. So we have one package of baby spinach in a large bowl. We'll do this, we'll get rid of any little this or that up in our blender. Makes a little splatter, a little bit of artwork. And now we're just gonna take our rubber scraper and we're gonna bring that salad dressing into our bowl. It's kind of like Caesar dressing meets ranch dressing is kind of the look we have here. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna toss our spinach so that it all gets coated. So right now we have all of our spinach leaves covered with our salad dressing. And so to that, I'm gonna add a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. The Parmesan cheese that we put in the dressing already was pureed when we blended it. So this is gonna give us a little toothsome cheese bite. And we'll stir it a little bit. 
And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to add our cornbread basil croutons to give our final flavor in the salad. Now with these cornbread basil croutons, that's only actually half of the batch, so you have tons of them. These will last for a nice long time in an airtight container, or if you're looking for another way to use them other than salad, you can drop them on the top of tomato soup and then it'll give it a nice punch, something a little more fancy than those saltine crackers. So we'll stir this all together. We'll put it into our serving bowl for the table. Recipe one is done. Let's see what our main dish is. Now that we have a delicious salad to start off our meal, it's time to work on main dish. And we're gonna do that with chicken Dijon pasta. But there's a secret ingredient that gives it kind of an extra little kick. And we're gonna do that with bacon. So I have five strips of bacon here, and I'm going to start by stacking them on top of one another because we're gonna fry up this bacon. And I find that it is easier to do this when you have it cut ahead of time because we want it into small little bite-sized pieces when we actually have it in the dish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by slicing through my bacon and I'm gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna work with half of it at a time and I'm just gonna come through and I'm gonna cut it into little strips just like this. And by doing that, then when the fat renders out of the bacon, what I'll be left with is just that meaty goodness. Plus two, in this recipe, we're gonna add some mushrooms. So I will be able to saute that mushroom uh, mixture that I've got going in that, well, some people call it bacon drippings to make it sound classy, but it's basically the leftover bacon fat. So I've got half of my bacon, almost all nicely chopped, and I'm gonna transfer this over into my skillet, and I'm gonna pull it apart a little bit so that the pieces aren't on top of one another. It'll help it fry up. I don't have my pan on yet. That's okay. Some people like to start it with a really hot pan, but I like to slowly bring it up. I feel like it crisps the bacon a little bit nicer. But hey, you've probably made bacon before. You do it the way it works for you. So I'm going to slice up the other half of bacon and add it to my pan. We've finished cooking our bacon and I've taken it out of the pan so we have our nice little container of bacon and we have all this delicious flavor in that pan still. So what I have here is I have some mushrooms and what I'm gonna do is you can if you want to slice them but I just like to snap them, finding the bigger ones. And I have eight ounces of baby portobello mushrooms. So I'm just gonna snap these and drop them in the pan and I'm gonna saute these in all of those bacon drippings for bonus flavor. So I've cooked down my mushrooms and you can see they've totally changed color, they've shrunk down and now they're a darker brown color. So I'm just gonna use a slotted spoon and I'm gonna pull them out and I'm gonna transfer them to a bowl until we need them again in a little bit. So now that I have my pan emptied, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add four tablespoons of butter and I'm gonna melt this down. And once this gets totally melted, I am going to add two cups of heavy cream to it. Once that's all incorporated and stirred together, I'm gonna let it simmer for five minutes so I get a really thick sauce that's gonna cover my noodles nicely. As you can see, we've got a lot going on here. While my cream was reducing and simmering, I made a box of angel hair pasta. So now we're just gonna take all of this and start combining it. Now, if we remember, the name of this is Dijon chicken pasta. So what I'm gonna do to my simmering heavy cream is add a teaspoon and a half of Dijon mustard, and I'm gonna stir and let this all come together. So while that Dijon mustard is coming and reducing and combining into my sauce, what I'm going to do is take a look at my grease 9 by 13 pan, so I know that's good to go. And to my box of angel hair pasta, I am going to add some chicken. Now, you can just simply buy a rotisserie chicken in the grocery store. Then they take care of getting all of their seasoning into that chicken, and it just gives it a nicer flavor than just having a chicken breast from the freezer or the refrigerator section. So I took one rotisserie chicken already and I've shredded it. I'm not gonna use all of it. I'm gonna use about two thirds of it. All of it's just a little too much for this recipe. Plus then you've got some leftover if you want to just put some barbecue sauce on it. You can just combine that together even in a microwave dish and then you could have a pulled chicken sandwich and it'd be an easy lunchbox lunch one day. So I'm gonna start by mixing my chicken into my pasta, and that doesn't take very long at all to combine. And now, my Dijon mustard 
has combined into my sauce. So I'm going to add a cup and a half of Parmesan cheese, and it's almost like we're making sort of, kind of, a macaroni cheese vibe here. So now I'm going to turn up my heat a smidgen, and I'm going to melt that Parmesan cheese in. So while that cheese starts to melt, I'm going to next take that bacon from way back at the very beginning, and I'm gonna pour that in now, and just toss it around. If you wanted to, you could make this more of a layered dish with the pasta and the sauce on the bottom, but to me, I like every bite having all those different flavors. Now what I'm gonna do is do a quick check on my cheese and do a little bit of a stir. You're gonna see it start to thicken up as well. Mmm, yummy. It's starting to smell melty and good. And now I'm going to take my mushrooms and I'm going to pour that into my pasta. You don't have to be worried if your noodles break apart because, because it's a pasta bake, you're going to be scooping and slopping and slicing through here. So it's no big deal. You don't have to be super sensitive when you're stirring this all together. So now that my cheese is all melted, I can smell that Dijon mustard coming through. If you wanted to, you could almost make this like a honey mustard chicken by squeezing in another teaspoon of honey mustard, or ha, no, we already have the mustard, another teaspoon of honey in there. But we're gonna keep this just Dijon today. I'm just gonna take a moment and pour this over the top. And now what I wanna do is toss my noodles so that all of them get combined in my cheese and cream sauce. This is actually, to be honest, one of my favorite foods in the whole entire world. I already have my oven preheating at 350 degrees. So that looks nice and level. So now, just when you think you can't make it any better, we're gonna make it better. So I have one cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. And we're gonna put that over the tippy top. Just a nice little sprinkle sprinkle. Then I have one cup of cheddar cheese. We're gonna shred and spread. Now, when we put this into our 350 degree oven, we're gonna put it in for 25 to 30 minutes because basically what we're doing is just bringing all of the flavors together. Everything in here is cooked with the exception of having that cheese melted, so it's not gonna take long at all. But like I said, we're gonna put it in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes, but before I do that, I wanna protect the cheese on the top. So before it goes into the oven, I'm gonna take a piece of aluminum foil and I'm gonna wrap it over the top. It's going to protect my cheese. Once it's looking all melty and wonderful, I am gonna take off just that maybe last two minutes or so, the aluminum foil. I'm actually gonna flip the broiler on and it's gonna make the cheese all bubbly and it's gonna brown it up really nice. So we'll check on it in 25 to 30 minutes. Let's talk dessert. All right, new kitchen means a fancy dessert. We busted out the deep fryer, which I don't think has ever appeared on Aprons Optional before, so this is a big deal adventure here, people. So we are going to make zeppoli, and this is an Italian-style donut. So what I have in here is one and one quarter cup of ricotta cheese, and I'm going to take just my stick blender, and I am going to puree this so it's nice and fine, and it'll take 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how strong your blender is. So I have my ricotta cheese nice and airy and fluffy, and this is a fancy dessert, so we're putting in a fancy flavoring. And we're gonna do that with a vanilla bean. Now, vanilla beans are expensive, but they are so worth it. Uh, you can find vanilla bean paste, but to be honest, I've never actually seen that in real life. So when something calls for a vanilla bean or a vanilla paste, I always just go for the vanilla bean. If you've never worked with a vanilla bean before, I'm gonna lay it out on my cutting board, and I'm just gonna take my knife, and I'm gonna cut all the way down the vanilla bean so I can slice it apart, just like this. Then I'm gonna open it up, and what I'm gonna do is, oh, it smells so good. What I'm gonna do is just take my knife, run it along the inside of it, and now I have my vanilla bean pods inside of there, and so that's where I'm gonna get all of my vanilla bean flavoring from. If you've ever had an actual vanilla bean ice cream before, it has that white coloring, and then there's those little black specks in there. That's the flavoring that you get from the vanilla bean. So like I said, this is kind of one of those expensive things. So in Hastings, to get two vanilla beans was $22, so that's $11 worth of vanilla, but it'll totally will be payoff. So those of you sitting there, it's worth it to have that expensive vanilla bean in there. So I'm gonna clear that out of the way. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna whip that together. 
And you know you've got it combined when you have a gentle polka dot happening in there with that white and that vanilla bean. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add two eggs to this and I'm gonna add it one egg at a time. Whoa. So first egg is in. We have our wet ingredients taken care of and now we're gonna get going on our dry ingredients. So we have one cup of flour in here and to that I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of sugar, two and one quarter cups of cups, that would be ridiculous. Two, it would explode everywhere. Two and one quarter teaspoons of our baking powder. And then to that, on the very tip top, we're gonna take and just put a smidgen of salt. And I'm just gonna roll this around in the bowl to combine it together. And now I'm gonna transfer my blender over into this bowl. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a smidgen of our wet ingredients. And we're gonna do this in about thirds. So we have everything all mixed and mashed together and I have my Zeppoli dough here. So we're gonna transfer our dough into just a gallon sized plastic bag. I'm gonna fold down the top and go to a corner. That way I don't have to worry about cleaning up the outside of my bag. And now I'm just gonna flip my bag up just like that and I can see all of my dough is in there. Now with my deep fryer, like I said at the very beginning, I have it set to 350 degrees right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drop little balls of dough into my deep fryer. And I want those little balls of dough to be about uh, between the size of a quarter and a golf ball. If I go much bigger than that, it'll skew the texture of my Zeppoli. Now I just cut off the edge and this is gonna make a lot of noise, so I'll talk it through first. I'm gonna squeeze in maybe four or five, depending on how much room you have in your deep fryer, and I'm gonna cook them and let them roll around until they're golden brown. I'm gonna pull them out, and I have already a paper towel lined plate, and I'm gonna sprinkle some powdered sugar on them. So let's get cooking. So when they come out, we're gonna take the powdered sugar and just sprinkle the top. You can do one side, both sides, you wanna do it when it's warm so that powdered sugar catches and sticks. So we're gonna keep frying up the rest of this dough and you know what? I think it's about time to sit down to dinner. New kitchen, new recipes, it's gonna be delicious. We have our basil cornbread salad. We have this delicious chicken Dijon pasta bake. It looks absolutely scrumptious and I call that portion, it's giant, but it's one of my favorite foods. And we're gonna end with our fresh vanilla Zeppoli. Oh, perfect meal to christen our brand new kitchen. So remember, the apron's optional, but the flavor isn't. Hear that Hastings? Sounds squidgy and cheesy, mushroomy and chickeny, crispy and bacony.